Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Z. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic of the video is once you let the cat, also known as dysphoria, out of the box, can you put it back in it? Or rather, not the box, but can you put it back in a hat? Also known as Pandora's box in this case, where once you open Pandora box of awareness that you do have gender dysphoria, can you put it back where it came from? I bet for a lot of you who are older adults who suddenly became aware that you have gender dysphoria later in life, this title of this video resonated with you very much. So, and you probably clicked on this video immediately. For younger adults, you may still be a little bit confused by what I'm going to talk about. And perhaps this video may not even resonate with your experiences. As I said before, there are different onsets of gender dysphoria. Sometimes the gender dysphoria onset is in early childhood. And for a lot of individuals, the onset of, of gender dysphoria is during puberty. And for a lot of people, it is in their adulthood. For a lot of other folks, gender onset can gender dysphoria onset rather happens later in life when you are um, perhaps even much older, age even like 35 and up, I would say. It is not uncommon to suddenly wake up and have a realization that you have a gender dysphoria. And there's a lot of reasons, and I talk about those reasons in a lot of my other videos. Um, regression is one of the re reasons. Uh, but suddenly, you can become very acutely aware that you're struggling with gender issues. And I did a video on this called Gender Crisis. So what does happen when the cat is out of the bag, so to speak, right? The Pandora box opens up. And this is what I want to talk about today. I want to walk you through, if you already had that experience, I want you to walk you through what actually happened and what people tend to do and also discuss whether can you actually put dysphoria back where it came from? Can you put all of that knowledge and information back into the back where it came from? I know that a lot of people ask me this all the time. A lot of people who are older reach out for my services because they opened up the Pandora box and they don't know what to do. And they're wondering, well, can I reverse it? it? To a lot of you hearing this may sound uh, a little unrealistic. Well, how can you reverse something you just learned? Once you know something, how can you unknow it? But when you are in crisis, and gender crisis is absolutely crisis, especially when it happens for you in the middle of your uh, life, especially when you're older adults and you already have careers established, you have perhaps even relationships established, uh, some of you even have already children. Some of you even have grandchildren. So what happens when it happens in the middle of all of that established life um, and you do genuinely feel like it is an absolute gender crisis? Well, first of all, let me say this. A lot of things can lead to Pandora box being opened. The reason why Pandora box opened up is because there were things there that needed to come out. No matter how it feels, I think it's a good thing that the Pandora box opened up because there's something that you needed to deal with. But Pandora box opens up for everybody differently. For some of you, it could be that you watched a film and there were some things that was portrayed on, on screen that touched you or dug deep in and pulled something out. Some of you may have maybe as as a fun sexual play engaged in um, switching gender roles. And that opened up Pandora box. For some of you, it could be numerous other things. Nonetheless, what a lot of you have in common is that that box opened up. That cat came out of the back, right? One of the things that happens when the box opens up is university universally everybody freaks out everybody has a complete go on anxiety attack freak out moment one of the reasons why the freak out moment happens the terrifying anxiety driven fear moment happens is because like i said your lives are established and because your lives are established this knowledge this understanding that you may have gender issues it's terrifying. It is scary to think that now, on top of everything else, you have to deal with this. For a lot of you, it may even feel like the rock has been pulled right underneath your feet. For the rest of you, it may feel like somebody has turned your world 
upside down. And suddenly you see everything through a very different perspective. Suddenly you see everything through a very different lens because you have that awareness that you're not comfortable with your gender assigned at birth or you feel something is not right there. So the freak out moment is going to happen to everybody. I have yet to see the person has has not been one way or another uh, overwhelmed by this experience. Everybody gets overwhelmed because how can you not? When you learn something so big about yourself, it is scary. It would scare me if one day I suddenly had realization that I have gender crisis. So let's acknowledge that that's the first thing that is going to happen. And that's a natural reaction of us being human beings. That's also a natural part of our self-preservation. Now, during this freak out period, or even a little bit after this huge anxiety attack, uh, people do a number of things. The three most common things I see people do is this. Number one, and if you're watching this, you may have done one of these three things. And if you've done something else, comment below, let me know. And if you just opened your Pandora box, be prepared. You most likely are going to engage in one of those three things. Again, it's it's not that um, I'm saying that that's a fact. It's just that when you observe the pattern so many times over and over and over working so many trans clients, it just becomes quite a, uh, quite a correlation. So first thing that people do, so that some people do one of the three things. One of the things that people do is uh, they go into complete denial. So... And that's actually an attempt to stuff the cat back in the back, is to try to deny that this actually happened. It's a psychological defense. So you try to forget about it. You try to negate the experience. And the way you're going to negate the experience is you're going to try your mind that what happened isn't real, that it can't be possible, that this, that this really can't possibly exist. Because look at me, I've been living my life gender assigned at birth. I have maybe family, I have children, for God's sake, I'm a parent. So clearly what's happening is something else that's happening to me. Or maybe you're going to tell yourself some other form of justification. Maybe you're going to tell yourself that, oh, I'm probably going through middle age crisis or whatever it is, but you're going to try to deny it. And you're going to try to deny it and you're going to try to stuff it away. And we all know that that doesn't work, do it. The second thing that people tend to engage with, if they're not engaging in denial, they're doing the second thing. The second thing is they try to look up professionals such as myself who specialize in this and they try to get more concrete answers a lot of people who reach out to me who just opened their pandora box i can hear the fear and anxiety in their voices but i can also hear is that while they are aware that they may confront a professional telling them yes this is gender dysphoria yes you may have to do something about it. A lot of people who reach out are also hoping and praying that I'm going to say, no, this is not what's going on. So that's another thing that people do. They reach out to professionals hoping to get some kind of clarity. The third thing is probably the first and the third is the most common that people tend to do. I think reaching out to professional is almost like the last resort I see. So I should have put it maybe even less, although they're not going in order. But the third thing that a person, individual, tends to do is they tend to go on the internet and start looking up for information, which is good and terrifying. It is good because you can learn things you never realized. You can start putting um, an understanding and meaning to things. It's a bad thing because we know what the internet is. There's a lot of Reddit groups, there's a lot of other groups, there's a lot of um, different spaces where there is a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of good information in those places, and yet there's a lot of misinformation. When people come to me, they usually have been through some element of denial, and they usually have been through hoarding information from the internet and collecting it and accumulating it and feeling like now they're stuck. So when they come to me, I can see how much the information they have collected from the internet has really impacted them because they have ran into transforming spaces and they have ran into very transphobic spaces that terrified them. So people come to me both informed and deeply, deeply misinformed. 
which in of itself is the ball of anxieties that one has to untangle. So be careful with that. But when you have that scare, terrifying moment initially, this is the three most likely things you're going to try to do. Denial. It didn't happen. It can be true. Reach out to somebody. Please tell me this is not happening to me or if this is happening to me. Can I do anything about it? People literally ask me, is there any way for me to just get rid of this gender dysphoric feelings without doing anything transition related? And the third one is going on the internet and collecting information and assimilating information in order to understand and in order to kind of make sense of what's happening to you. I know that there's a lot of other things that also people engage in. So like I said, if you don't fall into one of the three, just comment below. Let me know what you tend to do when this type of Pandora box opens up. Now, the key question, when the Pandora box opens up, can you close it? In my professional opinion, and I'm so sorry to be a dark cloud today, no. You cannot close Pandora box. Can you temporarily close it by being in denial? Yes. Will it last forever? No. And in my experience, when it reopens again, it is that much more impactful. Because now you have realization that it's still there. And now you're beating yourself up that you didn't do anything about it when it's initially opened up. So since you can't put the cat back into the bag, you're probably asking then what does it mean? Am I supposed to go through social, surgical, and medical transition? No. As I always say, transition is not for everybody, nor is it the only way forward. One of the things everybody always asks me who are older adults who have their life situated is, what can I do in the meantime to alleviate, to decrease the pain that I'm feeling? And if I continue to do this, will this work for the rest of my life? It's a million dollar question. And I always tell people, I don't know, and nobody can guarantee you an answer. You can absolutely start engaging in some kind of form of exploration of your gender, some form of getting yourself closer in connection to yourself, maybe through feminizing, through masculinizing, through bending some gender expressions, through journaling, through uh, so many other things you can do absolutely in privacy. And it can absolutely help you with the pain you feel. It can help you with dysphoria. Even talking to somebody, either a therapist or support person or opening up to people around you a little bit can help tremendously. Having said that, a lot of times, I'm very honest with all of you, you know this, a lot of times what also happens is once you engage in all those things, it's kind of like unraveling a shred because the authentic part inside of you feels it and wants more of that. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, even though it feels like it is a bad thing. So for some people, they are able to do minimal things to get in touch with their authenticity and live without really going through any huge transition steps. Some people, once they start engaging in little steps, they feel like they need more. They feel like it's not enough. And there's no way to tell which one of these categories you're going to fall into. There's no way to tell if you're going to engage in something and that's going to be your coping for the rest of your life. Or if you're going to engage in something and that's going to make you feel like you need to do more. It's a process. It is a process 100%. And no two processes are alike. So stepping forward in order to deal with the or everything that Pandora box opened up is always a gamble. But guess what? So is life. Everything in life is a gamble. Waking up this morning, getting in a car and driving to work and not knowing if you're going to make it there alive without having another car hit you is a gamble. In the very least here, you're gambling, you're gambling against your authentic self. And in my opinion, there's no lose. You can only win. Can that win come with other losses around you? Absolutely. And it does for a lot of people. Does that win also comes with a lot of other challenges? Absolutely. And it does for a lot of people. 
And some of you may say, getting more in touch with who I am and really getting more in touch with my authentic gender is not a win. It's a painful way to live your life. And I will have to say, agree to disagree on this one. Um, you know, and I will totally respect that that's how it feels to you. And I've seen a lot of people to whom that's exactly how it felt. And that is your reality. And that is your truth. So, but when you open up Pandora box, you can't close it. Remember, the Pandora box opened up for a reason. It opened up, chances are, because it's been probably, probably knocking and dying to open up. And you later, only later on, you'll see that there were all the signs that you didn't notice before. Only later on will you be able to reflect back and notice so many things in your past that were so clearly related to dysphoria, but you never really realized. You didn't have the context. You didn't have the language. You weren't in the right environment. But please, if your Pandora box opened up, if your cat came out of the back, don't try to stuff it back in. Don't go into denial. Don't go hoarding for inappropriate, true and untrue information. Take your time. At least take your time and just slowly, slowly see what can work for you. Slowly. Even, even just sit down and introspect. What are you learning here about yourself? Dysphoria is very different for everybody. For some people, the dysphoria is severe. For some mild. For some, it's almost non-existent where they don't think they have any dysphoria. What you may have found out about yourself may not even bother you as much as it may bother somebody else. But it's a part of who you are. We're all complex. We all have things about ourselves that we need to understand. And if you have Pandora box inside of you, it's there for a reason and it needs to be opened up. So comment below. Let me know if your Pandora box opened up. Well, I'm sure for a lot of it has. Uh, what did you do? Were you terrified? Did you try to close it? And if so, how? Did that work when you tried to do it? I know a lot of people have tried so many methods. You know, I'm picturing, when I talk about it, I'm literally picturing a big box that's just overflowing with emotions and overflowing with who you are. And you're sitting on top of it. You know, when the child will have a suitcase and the stuff doesn't fit, sometimes we have to, well, sometimes I literally have to either put my knee down on a suitcase or sit on it to zip it in because we try to stuff it so much. I'm picturing that, you know, putting your knee on top of the lid, trying to close it so tightly, being so against what's coming out. How about honoring that what's coming out is you? How about acknowledge that what's coming out is not good or bad, it just is? How about not judging what's coming up? How about letting what's coming out breathe and then figuring out what to do? Again, you don't have to figure out all of it right now. You don't have to make huge drastic steps. So comment below, let me know. I love reading all of your comments and I'll see you all next time. Bye.